Hi everyone, let's go directly to the content. You want to record in video your paintings. It is good for sharing and promotion, no doubt about it. Because how cool is to see the artists producing their paintings. The Recorder Docker is a new feature created for Krita 5 and you can create time lapses with it. This feature is cool because you can take breaks, close the image, turn off the computer, come back a month later and continue painting. Cool, so thanks Krita team. And today we are going to be exploring the Recorder Docker and all the settings. So are you ready? Because here we go! Really easy and fast. We are now in Krita 5, but where is the Recorder Docker? We go to the settings, dockers, and look for recorder, and you have it. Done. I'm going to move it a bit to see it better. So, and the first thing you notice is that Krita needs a location to store your recordings, obviously. If I go to C drive, you can see I have created previously a recorder docker folder, but you can select uh, whatever folder you want to store all your recordings. I can decide also the interval, the format and quality and the resolution. And by default, we are going to left as it is. And I'm going to be painting just a couple of brush strokes. I'm going to show you that Krita is capturing this in the recorder docker. There is a folder that is capturing all the snapshots to create later the time lapse. You can see that if I am painting, there is a red light right here, which is telling me that Krita is recording. If I stop painting, Krita is in standby. If I start painting again, you can see that it's red again. So it's recording more and more snapshots and you can see right there. If I finish my painting, imagine I want to create a video and I go to stop and let's see what happens when I click on the export button. I get this. It's a red cross that is telling me that I need the FFmpeg file. So where can I locate this file? Let me close this for a moment. I open my browser and I write the FMPEG and go to download, you can see that it's available for Linux, Windows and Macintosh. So I go to, in this case on Windows, I select this page, open this page and I look for their release builds. Then I save this on my desktop, in this case, once it's downloaded, I just right click, unzip the file, and then I just rename this to FFmpeg, which is clearer, more simple. I go to my C drive, and I put this right here, for example. I can use another location, but for me it's good right here. Come back to Krita, and export, and automatically detects path, but if the red cross continues here, I can just click here and go to my C drive or D drive or wherever and look for your folder bin and the exe file. Okay, select this one, open, and you can see that you can name this one and click on export. I see that I have selected, selected the MP4, which is a common format, and click on export and done. Now you can watch it, so in folder on or remove all the snapshots used to create this video. Until now we have been covering the basics for Recorder Docker. So do you want to know a bit more, more technical questions? So stay with me. Okay, let's explain what interval is related to. As you can see, the video time lapses are created from the snapshots. If I select one second, I am capturing one snapshot by second. That means a lot of snapshots are super good quality and fluid in the movements. You're capturing much more strokes in your painting. And if you select an interval of three seconds, you are going to capture less snapshot. What happens with the second five and six? The content that you paint of on these seconds are going to store on the seven second 
a snapshot. Let's continue. So let me explain a bit uh, why quality is related with with the storage on your hard drive. Let me show you how this work in the PNG and JPEG format. I have captured a snapshot and this detail here. PNG is the format that gives you more quality, but <laughs> It needs a lot of uh, storage on your hard drive because this PNG captures all the detail 16 megas per snapshot when we are using the compression level 3. Uh, it's recommended to use the compression between 1, 2 and 3 because it's a good balance between the, uh, the compression, less space uh, but it requires more CPU compute power. So let's see what happens if we use the JPEG. In the quality 100%, we get six megabytes. Um, we see that it's barely the same, but overall the image, we are uh, losing just a bit of quality, but it's a very good job for uh, JPEG. So I use usually, Use the JPEG for the snapshots and the PNG for the final art. But what level of quality is needed? Well, if we decrease to the 70%, you are going to see that we have these lines that are reflecting the loss of quality. And if we reduce the quality to the 40%, the loss of quality is even more visible. Okay, you see the squares right here and in the quality of 10% we get just no detail uh, we lose a lot of color uh, variance and you see the difference is much less space but you lose quality so I recommend to be in 80% around 70 and 90% Maybe around there is, is a good balance. Okay, now let me show you an interesting thing. The record in isolate mode. To understand this better, I have this paint in two layers. So I'm going to record with this active. And I'm going to isolate this. And obviously it's going to record what happens here. Okay, so I press record and go to isolate mode. So maybe I want to reinforce the signal that <laughs> the bugs are around there uh, and everything is being recorded. To verify that this is working, I'm going to look for the folder and you will see the result. And obviously it's painting. What happens if this is not so is not active? So now I have deleted the images. I'm going to deactivate the record, record in isolate mode. So if I paint now in isolate mode, Krita is not going to record the process. Okay. So I press the record and I put this in isolate mo mode and I'm going to make round circle signal caution <laughs> please okay this is not recorded because we are not using the isolate mode okay so i'm going to stop and to verify the same thing i go to the folder there is nothing recorded yet because everything was in isolate mode so if we deactivate the layer and start painting. So if we paint, if we are painting, then we're getting some snapshots. I think this clarify what isolate mode is useful for. There is also an interesting feature with the recorder docker is that you can activate the record automatically. And that means that if I am painting, I am recording one file, but if I close up this file and I create another file, Twitter is waiting, but is already recording in a standby. So if I start drawing, Twitter records automatically 
my images but maybe you prefer to set it this by yourself so you click here on the stop and deactivate the record automatically and you can see that if i create another document then Rita is not recording because it's waiting for me to press this button the record button also you can notice that you have the mp4 here you have the gif you have matroska web and perfect for the web and even you have the custom profiles so if you select one of them you can edit them so if you know how to manage the ffmpeg comments then <laughs> this is your site because i think you are going to be really happy playing with the, the comments you have even a preview here to understand better just things like the frame rate like the loop file size the scale um this kind of things okay let's go with the real case I'm going to export the time lapse and as you can see is about a minute but what happens if I just double this input FPS to 60 you can see how the video duration is around 32 seconds and what happens if I go even further put in 300 press tab and you can see that the video is now around 10 seconds the more input fps you put there the fastest the video is going to be okay and now let me show you one interesting trick because maybe you don't want to have the recorder docker always visible but you want to have a uh, control over the recorder docker so if you are run out of, of space then you can go to the settings configure toolbars and go to the brushes and stuff and look for record time lapse and just locate this wherever you want maybe right here i think it's a good place and now i look for export the time lapse okay so I select the record time lapse and the export options and you can see that they are already added in the upper part of the UI okay so click on OK and then you have they are integrated in your UI what happens if you want to go further or maybe you are having problems with the FFmpeg you can go to the creataartist.org if that happens. Also, you can use Caden Live software to achieve an image sequence. So let me show you how to do it. Make sure that the project is with the same FPS that you are going to render your final video. Go to the project, add image sequence, and here I look for the file name pattern. Give it a name if you want. Look for the right path. So I verify that this is the, the image I want to render. So look for the frame 000.jpg and open. And Kater Live loads everything for you. Click OK and you have the image sequence. If you just drag this to the timeline you can see that you can scroll to the right or to the left and see the process and this is good because sometimes we want to add some text or more uh, video editing options uh, just go to render select your settings give it a name here and make sure that is a full project if nothing else appear in the timeline or selected a thone you can see it's a snapping to the end and render in this case select a zone and it's rendering okay now you have a great power you can show all your friends how good you are painting your next landscape portrait or sketch if you like this kind of content please support krita we are creating a growing community so join us and we will make krita even better thanks a lot for watching and enjoy recording your next paintings see you in the next video or another video from the list because that helps a lot for youtube so you decide thanks a lot bye